disturbing article in the New York Times today about a growing presence of Al Qaeda fighters or Al Qaeda inspired groups, foreign jihadists fighting uh, on the side of the opposition inside Syria against the Assad regime. W what have you, and, and I'm about to talk to a, a foreign reporter who was actually held hostage by a group of, of foreign jihadists. W what have you seen? I mean, wh who are these fighters? What is the makeup of the fighters you've seen? I haven't seen the fighters who took the two foreign, uh, the British and Dutch journalists hostage, but I met their Syrian guide, a terrified young man uh, who said that they talked like Al Qaeda, they threatened to kill him uh, because he didn't have the proper beard and because he had brought infidels into Syria. Now, when we got in touch with Syrian rebels, the Free Syrian Army commanders on the ground to ask them about this case uh, and to try to help the journalists, they were appalled at this news. They seemed to know who these guys were up in the hills. One commander told us, listen, in an hour I could take these guys out with my men. Uh, there is a broad spectrum of different rebel groups on the ground here, Anderson. Uh, there are hundreds of rebel bands, and some of them tend to be kind of secular. Others seem to be Islamist-inspired, and some of them do have foreign volunteers. I've met three Libyan volunteer fighters who have crossed the border from Turkey over the course of the past week, joining larger groups of fighters. And some of the Syrians have misgivings about them being here. They don't want foreigners, certainly jihadists, fighting their battle. Others say, you know what? Nobody else has come to our rescue. Nobody else is helping us. So we'll take any help we can get to bring down the Assad regime. Yeah, interesting. I I've been a dangerous time. Stay safe. Thank you. With us now is Dutch freelance photographer Jeroen Orlemans, who was one of two foreign journalists held captive for a week until Syrian opposition fighters uh, rescued them. Jeroen, um, you were basically captured right after you crossed into Syria on July 19th. What happened? We were brought into the country by a smuggler's ring, and we were following a, a well-known smuggler's route. And, um, well, uh, after uh, being uh, into Syria for an hour, we kind of uh, were handed into a jihadist uh, movement who were camping at the, at the very border. So the, the people who were smuggling you into Syria accidentally brought you to this camp of jihadists. Who were the jihadists? Were, were they actually any Syrians? The, the, the majority of them were, were foreign. Where were they from? Uh, they were from Africa, from Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, some guys from the UK. Did you instantly know you were in the wrong place, that these guys were jihadists? Yeah, we immediately knew we, we were in the wrong place. Uh, we saw them, and, and they looked really jihadists as well, long, uh, wearing long beard, uh, immediately <laughs> talking religious. Uh, yeah, they were jihadists. And, and what did they, did they think you were spies? They uh, immediately started accusing us of being CIA. Well, we said we were journalists, and they said, like, we were suspicious looking. Yeah, we look military in their eyes. At some point, you, you tried to escape. Did you just think you just had to get out of there? Yeah, in a very early stage of our uh, um, imprisonment, we, we, we tried to escape because uh, things were, 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 were spiraling down. We thought that they weren't treating us uh, as nice. We, we, we knew, uh, they knew we were journalists and still they were keeping us. So we thought the ransom option uh, was, was coming into, into uh, perspective. Uh, we also were afraid that they might hand us over to another uh, Islamic group. Um, so we thought like we, we'd be better take our fate in our, into our own hands. And so in, at the second day of our captivity, we, we, we made a run for it. I understand you got about a mile away, but, but they caught you and, and they shot you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we thought it was, the camp was quite desolated at the, the, the time we did it, but uh, we, we hadn't seen a couple of guys unloading trucks. And they saw us and immediately we got caught in a crossfire and then they chased us down the valley and uh, after one half mile uh, they, they succeeded in shooting me and, and then five minutes later they, they got hold of John, they shot him as well. Where were you shot? I was shot in the, in the, in the thigh uh, and uh, John was uh, shot in his arm. Uh, miraculously only in the thigh and only in your arm because I mean they, they must have we're shooting at least 20, 30 bullets uh, at, at, at every single one of us. You could have easily been killed. Yeah, I, at that point I thought I would be killed, yeah, definitely. W were they Al-Qaeda? We, we actually discussed it with them. We said, like, well, what, what faction are you guys? And they said, like, well, can't say too much about it, but we're not Al-Qaeda. 
although we know they're down the road. They said well, that al-Qaeda's down the road, because there has been, there are increasing reports about al-Qaeda uh, a growing influence or growing presence, or jihadists, certainly foreign fighter presence uh, among the opposition. You were finally freed, though, by people in, mili in, in, in soldiers' uniforms or outfits. Who freed you? I think it must have been a Free Syrian Army uh, a group. Uh, like four or five of those guys, they, they, they came into the camp demand to see us. When they actually saw us, they, 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 they were outraged and then took one of our guards, uh, they, they threatened him at gunpoint, took him along and took us along, blindfolded and bl uh, handcuffed, and directed us into uh, their car. Uh, and, and, and we hit off, uh, shooting in the air and leaving those, uh, those, those jihadis behind. Very brazen action, I have to say. I'm glad you and, and your colleague were able to get out safely. Uh, your Jeroen Orlemans, thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks, Anderson. Very lucky to be alive. Uh